Well, I'm in Calhoun County visiting with my good friend Mary Desports at her farm, Doodle Hill. And this has been a part of my life for 30 years now. Mary, thank you so much for letting me come today. And what I love about you is that uh, I found somebody who wasn't prissy like me. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Amanda. I'm not prissy. <laughs> yeah, well, I meant not prissy because I'm not prissy. Yeah, either, yeah, not we're not prissy. But Mary, um, you came here, um, you grew up in Columbia, and um, we, we both took riding from the same wonderful person. That's right, Miss Belser, yeah. outside of Columbia on the Bluff Road. But you really kept with it. Yes, and I worked for her uh, through college, and then she passed away, and we got to run the farm. My roommate and I got to run Hickory Top, which was, we were pretty young for that, but uh, Mr. Belzer let us run it as long as we stayed out of his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but then um, you decided that you wanted to have your own place, and um, you were married then at the time and started looking around and found this property. and. It's called Doodle Hill because it's so sandy, and that was actually a plus, I think. It's great footing for horseback riding. It drains really fast, so you can ride pretty much an hour after the thunderstorm goes by. It's safe, it's not slippery, it's not rocky. But yeah, it's real healthy for horses. And then you also have a pretty interesting house. My house is, um, is pretty old, but yours is more interesting than mine. Tell us well, about your house. My house was the Congaree Baptist Church, and they were building a new sanctuary, and we saw it going up, and we asked what they were gonna do with the old wooden church, and they said they thought they would raise it and tear it down, so we asked if we could buy it. And we bought it for a dollar a square foot, huh. and moved it five miles, essentially. Yeah. And that was back in the day when that was easy to do. But it's been so much fun and there's a pond in the front yard and so we have children about the same age and so we've just kind of lived out here with you a lot uh, of the time. Thanks, it was yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. Mary, over the years, how many kids do you think you've taught how to ride? I'll, I'll just say a few hundred, Amanda, since I've been teaching professionally since I was about 18. So We have six school ponies right now and then we get to use a few of our uh, boarders horses when they're not being used. Them. And the horse that um, you let me ride earlier today because it had been a long time since I'd been on a horse is one that's known as a school pony, I think. He's a school horse, <laughs> yes. He, he's, and his name is John, and he's 25, and has been working here his whole life. One of the things is you're so kind to your animals, you're so good-hearted, and you found that there's a special food. Um, you and I have helped you put some out sometime that's kind of pre-cooked that really has made a difference in the longevity and health of these older horses. It, it really has. I think a horse's teeth or any maybe herbivore, their teeth are their life. They can't live without having really good teeth. So this food is pre-cooked and it's called, it, it's sold by lots of names, but Equine Senior is how you find it in the store. But it's always been fun because there's always been some new animal coming and um, the, the latest ones are, um, something that you tried once before, but now I think it's gonna be more successful, are some goats. And tell us why it's good to have goats here and why these goats are particularly good. Well, these goats are dairy goats and they're a little bit easier to manage and handle because they're used to being handled as opposed to briar goats that just clean up land. But I really got them for cleaning. I don't like to weed eat. It's my least favorite job. So uh, this, they have a few projects around that they've been working on for a month now. I've had That's them a, a month. Yeah. So. Also, we've got some feathered friends out here, I think, a, a nice little flock. I do. We have about 20 chickens, and they're around the corner back there. And then we have two old geese that have been here forever. And that's something? Geese live a long time. Yeah. The thing that I just find so fascinating is um, you've got a little herd of cows, and it's a special kind of cow, Mary. It is. They're called Dexters. Mm -hmm. Well, I have one milk cow also, but my Dexters are beef cows, and they're small, they're hardy. Uh, they stay fat very easily, and they're completely grass-fed just because they don't need grain. I give them grain to keep them friendly and to be able to catch them if I need to. Mary, in addition to all these kind of farm animals, um, you've got some regular animals that you might find at somebody's house, but a lot of them have a job to do, especially the dogs. So let's talk about those. I do. I have um, uh, two Great Pyrenees. One is actually part Anatolian, and then I have just a, a watchdog, but the Great Pyrenees actually do have a job because they protect all the other animals, and they're just amazing what they do. They, um, they stake out the farm in different places, and I think this puppy will stay with the goats. We'll see about that in a few months, but 
you know, there the, I had to have that because so many stray dogs would come through and kill chickens or mm -hmm. kill your kill. The, my first goats got killed, and it was pretty tragic for my children. So yes, not only stray dogs, we also have um, coyotes. Coyotes. Really with. I haven't heard a coyote since. I think the coyotes just know this is where the Great Pyrenees are, and they never fight. It's never like one comes back mm -hmm. bloody or anything. Yeah, yeah. They just bark. But then we also have. Um, a beauty queen dog. Oh, Tina Fey. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and she was, well, her mother had a, her mother's name was Tiny, and Tiny had a dynasty because she had two litters that all my friends took the babies before uh -huh. they were really even born, and um, they're, they're cute little dogs. They're smart, and they, Tiny wandered up with her boyfriend mm -hmm. years and years ago. Tiny has is deceased, but the dynasty still <laughs> exists. <laughs> the dynasty, yeah, and so, um, it's just wherever we are, there's there's somebody warm and sweet to love on out here. <laughs> when I look around and think of what it was like when I first started coming out here to see you, this was all much more open, and you got these little cedar trees from the Forestry Commission. I guess they were what about yes, ten, ten inches tall. Yeah, I think we got five hundred the first time. And I think every and here we are on this sandy soil that doesn't hold much water and. These trees are magnificent, and and they're so important for wildlife. They they're full of birds at night. If you drive through at night, you'll hear them. I don't like to do that actually because they flee and you hear them. But it's they also are good wind protection. They yes. wind the wind breaks are all over the farm. So, and I think if only people could look at something like this and think, why in the world do you plant those Leland cypress that die when you could plant an eastern red cedar or native every, tree? Every Leland I planted has died. <laughs> <laughs> they split and fall and do all kinds of things. And then um, lately it's been fun to come out here because you've got a little, you know, I don't know how you found the time to gather up all these little rocks and make this beautiful little native pool uh, of little specialty things. Tell me what, how did that all start, Mary? Well, when I was little, my brother made a fish pool in the backyard, and I was four, and I guess I was his helper, and I just thought it was the most fun thing ever, and we, we did it with cement back then, and now you have nice liners. It's yeah. a lot easier, but yeah. digging in this sand, it didn't take me very long to dig those pools, really. It's, it, I mean, I slept well those nights, but it was a lot of fun, and then the rocks really the only, that and the liner was the only real expense, and it's just for frogs, frogs and tadpoles. and bugs. Yeah, yeah. So it's not a mosquito breeder thing because it's got frogs and tadpoles. It in. had mosquitoes the first two weeks it filled up with water and I haven't seen the mosquito mm -hmm. larva in there since. Yep. So yep. Mm -hmm. there are natural predators. And so and that just reminds us when we're out here at night we hear owls calling. Who what what do they say? Who uh, cooks, who for, cooks me? for you? Who cooks for you? Who cooks for you? <laughs> and we hear the frogs and um there's just so much that goes on out here. And because of um, Mary, Mary Desports, everybody in South Carolina knows that Bobby Desports was one of the great naturalists of South Carolina. Yep. And, um, you know what, Mary? I think you're carrying on this tradition, and I want to thank you for letting me come and letting me be a part of kind of the extended Doodle Hill Farm family. Oh, just love having you, Amanda. We've been best friends for life. <laughs> <laughs>